wait until you watch this next story. A liberal wrestler from Appalachia, and I say liberal because that's literally the wrestling name he used, who used to enjoy the crowds taunting him, is now living in a very different and dangerous reality. In this divisive political climate, he says the taunts are getting too real and the sport is too dangerous for him. Ellie Reef has this fascinating reporting. <laughs> This is politics in America right now. Baby killer! Channeled through a pro wrestling ring. I just criticize their way of life and tell them how they need to follow a real man like myself or my hero, Joseph R. Biden. The progressive liberal Dan Richards is a wrestler who fans in Appalachia love to hate. When I grab a hold of him and I look in the crowd and say, hit him in the mouth, and they all come to their feet, yes, I hit him in the mouth. And they go, he did that for us. Dan and his mentor, Bo James, came up with the gimmick when Trump was first running for president. I said, my God, if we had a guy that was the anti-Trump and we could send him to the ring in these towns, how much heat would we get? They want to see you get your ass kicked. That's the heat you want. It's the greatest feeling in the world. It's a high. Now that politics has gotten so intense, it's getting too real for Dan. The response to me and people who think like me are more violent. Dan really is liberal. I first interviewed him in 2017, which now, bizarrely, feels like a more innocent time. So in 2017, you wore like an Oliver Print Hillary shirt. It was very Hillary focused. Hillary! Like, what pieces of current events do you pull from to sort of trigger people? Well, I've got a Biden collage shirt and one of Kamala Harris. The Biden one triggers more people than anything because I don't think half these people even know who Kamala Harris is. Dan says he gets more heat now than when Trump was in office. He thinks fans feel like they got their hero taken away. There's so many people that think an election was stolen. I sell realism and emotions it gets an emotion out of people. So whatever the headlines are of that week, that's what we're gonna use. But do you ever talk about the election being stolen? Yeah. If Dan wins by cheating, then his opponent can go to the microphone, and, and like I do, and I say, a lot of these good people here tonight think you stole that just like an election was stole. The building goes nuts. They usually wrestle in Appalachian counties. Some went for Trump by more than 80%. It's a small mountain town. Poor county, poor community, no hope. He represents to them everything that's put them in that position. And do you think it's changed in the last five years, how intense it is? Yeah, it's more dangerous. The moment I realized things had changed, I think, is when I had rocks thrown at me and someone tried to light me on fire and someone pulled a knife on me. So recently? Yeah, I mean, what, that was a month ago. People are even more frustrated, they're even more divided. So now here's this guy in our town saying this stuff that we see on television that we don't agree with. So we can't get those people. We can't get the politicians. Let's get him. They'd advertise Dan would be wrestling bow in Stickleville, Virginia, a community of about 330 people. Fans came ready to boo Dan. We all have our own opinion, but uh, his, especially in this area, is a lot different and you know everybody wants to punch him in the face we love wrestling first of all but to come and show the liberal like hey we know what we stand for yeah and, and definitely not the left side so do you want to see him get beat up yes <laughs> do you want trump to run again amen you do yes yeah okay corey smith wrestles as white trash millionaire he doesn't like Dan's politics, but he's off the Trump train. I don't see how things could get any worse, but with Trump, um, we would find out. You think so? I believe so, yeah. When you stop putting America first, start putting yourself and what you want to do first, I'm jumping, I'm jumping off any train. But you got to tell me when that moment was. Um, Twitter. If I'm at my job and I'm constantly tweeting, I'm getting fired. I want somebody that leads this country by actions, not by words. The crowd was loud for other matches, but when Dan walked out, it was next level. No! 
Then he got out of the ring and riled them up more. A guy looked ready to fight Dan. Some fans fought each other. Bo cut the match short. Backstage, they said the crowd got too hot too fast. We felt it coming. We pushed it too far. It's a different kind of hate now, and it's at a level that I haven't experienced previously. So anyone who doesn't think it's getting more violent and what, on what side it's coming from needs to have a reality check. You have to know how to let it breathe. You have to know how to hear it, feel it, live it. You can be great and do all the athletic moves, all the stuff. If you don't know your audience, it doesn't matter. Ali Reeve joins us now. I always say you have a way of just disarming people so they tell you exactly what they're experiencing and thinking. Why did you want to tell us this story? Oh, well, I had felt politics being much more heated and intense when I covered it, but, you know, maybe at a political rally or something like that. And I was looking for a way that could show this visually, just how intense it was, even for the average person. So I called up Dan and Bo. Ressa. And what was it like being on the ground there as you're reporting this out and listening to these stories? It's such an interesting perspective. Well, I, I, the wrestlers often have so much knowledge and wisdom about what regular people want to hear and what they're feeling and their frustrations. So I loved that. Um, it was one of the nicest Trump supporting crowds I've ever been in because the announcers came on and said, these girls are real nice and they love wrestling, so be nice to them. <laughs> Yeah, that's not always the reception you get at other at other Trump events. That is, it is a perspective, though, into a worldview of people that you don't always get from even talking to lawmakers and whatnot. Yeah, they're really there, and it's uncensored, and it's unpolished, and they're just, like, actually, there's no media professional tweaking every little word they say. It's just very real. How do, how do I say this without... It, that made me sad. Yeah. Because they can't tell the difference in many ways, not I'm generalizing here, between reality and not reality. I mean, this was something that's supposed to be fun, but... And then, you know, they're operating on this whole sort of thing about, you know, people, the Democrats being evil and election denial and the election was stolen and all of that. And I think it's... I, it's just... It just makes me really sad. I just, I just want to go and say, hey, guys, none of that, what you're believing is true. And you can't... I don't know. I, I don't know what to do with that. I really don't. Well, I think it does reflect the sort of dehumanization of your political opponents um, that we're seeing now. Like, when I interviewed them five years ago, I interviewed people in the crowd and they were laughing. They'd be like, ha, who doesn't love to hate the liberal? But now it's way more serious. Yeah, and we, as we have seen around the country... Dangerous. Dangerous. Yeah. And that's the point. That's why I said I don't know what to do with that, because we're at a point now where people are being, because of, you know, who they are, uh, because of what they believe, they're being, they're in danger. And as we see, five people are dead, in large part because of not believing in, you know, or, or for vilifying people that they don't agree with. Thank you, Ellie.